of the Alabama program was an evolution, but if you ask me what was a bigger impact, the signing Wilbur Jackson, 1969, or the 1970 Alabama Southern Cal game, it's Wilbur Jackson. A lot of people across the country saw Bryant, and they saw Wallace, and they saw these two dominant figures, and they thought they were the same thing. Well, they weren't. Segregation was an awful thing. It was not a Southern problem, it was an American problem reflected in college football. When we did finally correct it, that was the beginning of college football as we know it today. On the 100th anniversary of college football, ABC Sports presents in today's game, the top-ranked Longhorns of Texas meet the unbeaten Razorbacks of Arkansas. this 100th anniversary of football, one of the great football games of all time, and both of them I wish could be number one, but at the end, whichever is number one will deserve it, and the number two team will still go to a bowl and be a great team. Nixon decides that he is going to come to this game, the 1969 game. It was the very last effectively national championship game played between two all-white teams. It crystallizes so well the way that our negotiation of race in this country was changing. And to and catches the ball! What a the nation's number one team, Texas, had to come from behind. Now he's coming up. Texas is the last national champ that was not integrated. And not only did it never happen again, it can never happen again. The team to be behind 14 to nothing, and then not to lose its cool and to go on to win. That proves you deserve to be number one, and that's what you are. Yeah. Nixon had strong opinions about football protesters and college protesters in general. By the late 1960s, there's a period of four or five years where there's essentially a black athletic revolt, including amongst black college athletes. The Community Relations Service in the Justice Department has examined 140 colleges and high schools in 17 states, studying various forms of campus unrest. It predicted more trouble this year it began really at San Jose State, where it was championed by Harry Edwards, a prominent sociologist, who tried to organize black college athletes in protest and actually tried to organize a boycott of the 1968 Olympics. That visibility puts a lot of pressure on the person in that position. Some of them succeeded, others failed, but you have to recognize that being a black athlete was inherently political, whereas for someone else it would simply be a matter of playing and participating in a sport. In 1968 alone, there were over 100 instances of black college athletes protesting, most of them football players. But what happened in Wyoming was the largest of these. Neither the coach nor the blacks will back down. And neither side has contributed much to racial harmony in this trouble. But the issue is more than that of a standoff between a tough, hard-headed coach and some racial firebrands. The issue is that even in Marlboro country, you cannot hold back the racial revolution. The University of Wyoming in 1969 was a celebrated football team. It was ranked 12th in the nation, an unbeaten record, and black players were key to that success. And there were 14 black players. They were among the only black students on that campus. The Black 14, they call them. They have risked their college education and possible professional football careers to express their feelings about the racism of the Mormon church. The Mormons believe blacks are cursed with the mark of Cain and so won't accept us as full members. The Black 14 came to Coach Lloyd Eaton before the BYU 